bella buona, cattiva sorte, io l'amerò, l'amerò fino alla morte, nella buona, cattiva sorte, io l'amerò. Bentornati, welcome back everyone and thank you for joining us uh, today, depending on wherever you're watching from across Canada, thank you so much for joining us today. Well, as we all know, COVID-19 inevitably affected every facet, all aspects of our lives, uh, including the film industry. Canadian filmmaker, director Sergio Navaretta uh, was in the midst of releasing his passion project called The Cuban to the World, and then the world changed. So to tell us this new path, a new direction that The Cuban has taken, we're very pleased to welcome to our program Sergio Navaretta. Grazie. Hi, Sergio. Grazie a voi. Buongiorno, buongiorno. Buongiorno. Sergio, thank you so much for joining us today. Well, let's get right to it. Uh, before we get thank into uh, the Cuban and, um, mm -hmm. and, and more of that, you know, it, it was on its way. You started with screenings. You had a screening in Whistler uh, for the Whistler Film Festival where you were the, the film won Best Cinematography, by the way. Congratulations on that. Thank you. You were also you so um, at the Pan African Film Festival in LA. So there were all these things happening, the red carpets that were starting to unravel and happen in such a positive way. So when full stop came, tell us what your initial feelings were uh, being that you were in this process. Well, <laughs> I mean, like, I think like everybody, uh, I was in complete shock. Uh, and I, I sort of com compare it to the stages of grief when, uh, when you, you, you know, you lose a loved one. Some days you're angry, some days you're in disbelief. And then some days you wake up and say, I can, you know, I can, I can forge and, and move on, move through this. And, um, you know, I, I really, I have to thank, you know, my partner, Alessandra Pichon and my partner, Zana Golia and Taras Colton and people like the, the, the Minister of Culture, Heritage, Sports and Tourism, uh, Lisa McLeod, um, because with, with strong leadership, it brings out the best in you. And, I, and you know, with a, a wonderful team around me, I was able to, you know, pivot and we were able to look at new and, and interesting ways to get the film to, to audiences. And now, Sergio, so the light at the end of the tunnel is that your movie is going to be seen on a big screen during the, uh, actually the opening night of the Italian Contemporary Film Festival. And that must have sort of brightened up your, uh, your, 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 your life when you heard that, that you were going to be included. Yeah, absolutely. We were absolutely thrilled. So we, we, had, um, we had been in discussions about using the drive-in experience uh, which is a, a throwback to my childhood and, and per, previous generations. Mm -hmm. You know, that communal experience of enjoying a movie in the comfort of your own car um, is something we had thrown around for a long time. And now actually we're doing a uh, North American world, uh, North American wide release of the movie at drive-in theaters and virtual theaters. So the ICFF really opened up a, a, a great opportunity for us to have that, you know, big premiere red carpet experience in Toronto. And, uh, you know, I couldn't be more thrilled to have, you know, uh, organizations like Chin on board and Rogers and, and ICFF uh, to put this together because it's, it's being done the right way and it really honors the spirit of what the movie was shot for and made for. Um, we put three years of, of a lot of love and passion into it and ultimately we want to see it with a group of people on a big screen. So this is, uh, you know, we couldn't be more thrilled about it. So Sergio... Um, I know you filmed in Cuba and in um, Brantford, was it Andrea? Brantford. But Brantford really, and as Paris, a, Ontario. As a, as a producer, and also I've traveled to Cuba, it must have been very challenging um, to shoot there. Can you give us a bit of insight into that experience? Well, you know, it sort of taught me a lot. Um, as a director, you go in with a, a, a very stringent and clear vision about what you want. And I learned to be more fluid because they, you know, a lot of us talk about living in the present moment and uh, really living life to the fullest. And, and they, they actually embody that in their everyday life. They don't have the luxury of thinking about tomorrow or next week or next year. So every day was a huge challenge. But what it did, it forced me to really look at what I had on paper and see if I can come up with something better with the resources that I had. And as artists, you, you get put in a sandbox with time and budget and, and circumstance, and you have to make the best of it and really create within those parameters. So I found it invigorating. I found it, uh, you know, part of me wanted to hate it just because of, <laughs> you know, personal reasons, which I won't get into right now, but like, it's just the spirit of the people is what, what gets you through. And I think that um, is certainly communicated in the music in this film and, and uh, in some of the vibe that you'll be able to experience. 
Well, speaking of, of the vibe, I was going to ask you something else, but when you mentioned the music, it kind of uh, brought me to, to that point. Um, mm -hmm. I know that uh, you kind of started out in music uh, back in the day, <laughs> and uh, you know we're going to go there. Yeah, we're going to we're going to go there. But you had um, the music in this film was very important. You know, we talk about yes. what makes a film a film and how to get the creative process out there, and we know that music is very important, especially in this film. Um, yes. You got to work with Ilario Duran, which. Uh, as many who know him, and if you don't know him, he's a Grammy, Grammy nominated. He has won, he's multi, multi Juno Award winner, and someone who you were, you couldn't wait to work with. Talk to us about that connection, because not only with him, you brought Oscar winners and Oscar nominees to the table, of course, with Lou Gossett Jr. Uh, and more. So talk to us about that experience. Well, you know, working with an A-class team only elevates your game. So for me, Yes, the music was important. I can take you back to, you know, when I was seven or 12 years old, going to the Chin Picnic, which at that time was at Ontario Place. And my parents would sit me right in front of the stage. So a lot of those experiences that I had uh, with my family, with my parents, with my mom, who's still a huge Johnny Morandi fan. So, you know, uh, being dragged along, chasing him around the, cities of, the, the city of Toronto, meeting him through Chin and, and all those great events that were organizing concerts. That was very informative to me. So, you know, uh, Italian was my first language. So, you know, these these uh, station like Chin really um, offered us an opportunity to experience our culture in that very unique way. So then I went to the Conservatory of Music. And so somewhere in my 20s, um, I gave up music and, and met a director, James Cameron. And uh, that sort of changed the trajectory of my life. And, uh, and you know, I, I always wanted to be in movies, but growing up in Toronto and in the suburbs, you, it, it's not like you have a tangible connection or you know anyone or another director that can mentor you or tell you the way, the paths to, to Hollywood. So I sort of had to learn that uh, on my own. But once I met James Cameron, that was the turning point. So to bring it to your question, yes, Hilario Duran is, is world renowned. We happen to have a really vibrant Cuban community here in Toronto. And um, what a luxury to have that. So you have world-class musicians that work and live in Toronto and, and we had full access to them. And so the collaboration was wonderful. And then ob obviously working with Lugasa Jr. was a dream. He, he brought everybody's spirits up on set and just brought everybody's game to, to you know, 110%. So, and Shorey Agdashlu was another actor that I always wanted to work with. Uh, so this movie really brought a lot of my dreams come true. And, and I think when, when you, work on a passion project some of those opportunities uh, line up and uh obviously it wasn't just me it was you know i give credit to my team and everybody involved i think everybody had a personal connection to the themes of the movie which is in some ways about um human connection and the power of music so before we go though sergio i want to ask you mm -hmm. because um you know you've your your kind of record with the movies you make are exploration of the human condition can you yes. explain the exploration of the Cuban so we get a sense to our viewers what it's about, so what we can expect to see on July the 20th? Yeah, so ultimately I just want to start with, it, it is an uplifting movie. It's full of Afro-Cuban jazz. It's very colorful, very entertaining. But the impetus for it was really, um, you know, personal. I was dealing with the loss of my father and, um, you know, lost stories and this idea of our, the disconnection between us and our elders. So in this movie, you see a young Afghan nurse really connecting on an emotional level with an elderly gentleman who teaches her so much about life and helps her come into her own um, through the power of music. So, you know, it's we're, we're, we've never been in, in, a, in a more interesting time when we are thinking about long-term care and, and our connection to our elders. And uh, I think this pandemic has really taught us a lot of lessons so that this movie really points to that. And I hope that ultimately it brings people hope because that, that's what it was made for. Uh, Sergio, you know, I saw a quote where they said that uh, director Sergio Navarrete does, don't, it doesn't tread delicately in presenting um, the physical, uh, mental, and uh, emotional toils that both dementia and Al Alzheimer's disease take, take on. So yes. um, I know it's, we see the music and everything, but mm -hmm. if you just want to touch quickly on that, because it is a very important subject matter. Well, we, we um, spent several months consulting with scientists and doctors at the forefront of the effect of music on, on the minds of uh, dementia, dementia patients. And one thing I didn't want to do is, I did the same thing with Looking for Angelina when we dealt with you know, domestic violence. You don't want to tread lightly. You want to tell the truth. And in telling the truth, I think people will connect to it uh, universally. And uh, with this film, I think it provides that balance. It's a bit of a roller coaster. 
Um, so when you're in the nursing home, you really get to experience what somebody in isolation uh, who's lonely and who's sort of lost and struggling with his, the, his own mind has to experience. Um, and then as we go back to his memories, we're with him in, in the colors and the, the, uh, the textures and the music that, that he would have been experiencing in his mind. So, yes, uh, we were bold in terms of our representation and also of the Afghan culture. Um, it wasn't something we took lightly. We spent six months with what we call our Afghan family who were able to share with us the nuances of that very rich culture. And hopefully we present it in a way that uh, they'll be proud to represent. Fantastic, Sergio. We have to go. Unfortunately, there's so many things, so many layers to talk about, but we do have to go. Uh, we have thank the you. Minister thank Lisa so McLeod coming up just next, and I know that you know her well. So we're going to say thank you and, 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 and bye congratulations, to Sergio. Sergio, and I can't wait to see it on the 20th at the Italian Contemporary Film Festival at Ontario Place and the Drive-In. Absolutely. Fa una buona job. Grazie. Grazie. <laughs> thank have you. Have a great day, guys. Thank, thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. That's right. So it runs uh, July 20th through to the 31st this at Ontario Place. This is opening night. And, you know, we this had so many July, questions. July 20th, you yeah. and I both had so much questions for him, but Ali, you know, he has to keep the we, show going. We have to go, of course. Um, yes, coming up in a short few minutes, we're going to be uh, welcoming uh, the minister, Lisa McLeod. But for right now, commercial break.